You've probably been using Scratch Looks blocks because they are awesome. In this Scratch 3 Basics tutorial, we'll go through each block, including the graphics effects. And I'll share with you how I use Looks blocks in Scratch to debug my projects. And we'll also create a previous costume stack block together. Coming up. Hello world, Surfing Scratcher here, teacher surfer programmer bringing you the goodness of learning to code through video tutorials. If it sounds like something that you're into, then consider hitting that subscribe button. Hit the show more button down below to check out show notes that relate to this video tutorial. If you're into my thesaurus sweater here, I've got a link in the description below. If you go ahead and purchase it, you'll be supporting this channel and independent artists. So big ups from us to you. But hey, let's go look into those blocks. All right, here we are in the Scratch Project Editor. I've got a little Jurassic scene with all these dinosaurs to help us suss out all these looks blocks. The first blocks we'll look at are these say blocks. So just go ahead and click what the say block does. And you'll see here that we're currently on the Titanosaurus here. And it says hello for two seconds. So we can go ahead and change these inputs and it will say that message for a long time. And you can also change the message. So where are the trees? and it will say it for four seconds. You can also say a say block without a specified duration. And what that does is it just sticks that speech bubble up on the screen. Now, the way to get rid of that is either pressing the stop sign or you can create an empty say block and it will get rid of it. The next blocks are the think blocks and they work the exact same way as the say blocks except they are floor bubbles instead of speech bubbles. So the exact same rules apply to our think blocks. I love using say and think blocks for when I'm debugging my scratch project. So when I think something should be happening, I say it for that specified duration and if it says it on the screen, well, it meets my expectation. And if it doesn't, well, then I know there's a problem. The next looks blocks are some more stack blocks and they refer to the costumes. Now remember, costumes refer to the costumes tab and they're all these different outfits that our sprite has here. So we can click through and change them, but we can also do that through our code blocks. So we can use this stack block to switch to a particular costume. So here it will, once we press it, it will switch to costume B. Uh, we can also just press this next costume button and that will just go to the next costume in the list. Once we get to the end, it will just cycle it back to the first one. So that's really useful for animation. I'll just grab a repeat block and I'll show you what that looks like. So I've just grabbed a repeat block here. We're waiting for a tenth of a second and we're just gonna switch costumes. Watch what happens to our Triceratops. Yeah, you do your little dance Triceratops. There isn't a previous costume stack block, but we can easily create one using this switch costume block. I'll show you how to do that. You jump into your operators and you grab a takeaway reporter block, head back into your looks blocks, then scroll down and find the reporter block that reports on the current costume number. So if we stick that inside the reporter block here, the takeaway one, we just take away one from that and we stick that inside. See what I did there? We are going to stick that inside the costume number that we're gonna to switch to. When we press it, it's going to go back a previous costume. So that's pretty neat. We also have the ability to change the backdrop inside of any given sprite. We can also do the same thing on the stage code blocks. So we can switch to a particular backdrop, just like we did with the costumes. I've got two costumes here, so we can switch to the woods and we can switch back to the Jurassic scene. We've got these great options here where we can just go to the next backdrop. We can go to the previous backdrop of the stage and we can also just go to a random backdrop. So that's kind of cool. We've also got the next backdrop stack block here. All right, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. So we can go ahead and set the size or the scale of the sprite and we can also change it. So currently we're on Dinosaur 3, which is the pterodactyl here in the sky. We can click the stack block and change it back to 100%. We can also increment its size by a specific value. So here it's 10, so I keep clicking this. Our pterodactyl just keeps growing in size and look, it's coming closer to us. Is it gonna collide with us? Oh, okay, let's go back to 100%, get out of there. We can also decrement that and make the pterodactyl fly, fly away into the distance. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with these next blocks. So here we can change some effects of the sprite. So right now, if I click this, it's gonna change the color effect by 25. So I'll just click this a few times and you can see our Tyrannosaurus Rex is just gonna multicolor there. So that's pretty neat. If you click the drop down menu here, you can see there are a couple of options here. In fact, there are seven options so here on the fish eye, so if you click this, watch what happens to our Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's actually increasing in size, getting a little bit fatter there, which is quite funny. You can also decrement that and getting our Tyrannosaurus back to where it should be. Let's check out these other features. There's a well feature. 
Oh yeah, turning around. Getting out of your twist there, T-Rex. All right, you can also got this pixelate, this 8-bit effect, which is quite neat. Almost like our Google dinosaur up there. Okay, we've got a mosaic. What that does is that will create many T-Rexes here, like an array of T-Rexes, which is pretty neat. Let's see how far we can go. Oh man, there's just too many. We've also got a brightness where we can elevate the brightness of the T-Rex all the way to white. That's a little bit too bright. And we've got a ghost. Now ghosting is really interesting uh, because that relates to transparency. So can we actually see the T-Rex on the screen? So you see it going away and it's fading out there. So this is a really useful effect, the ghosting effect. You can also set an effect specifically here. So set the ghosting effect to zero. If we set it to 100, that means it is fully ghost mode. You can also go ahead and clear the graphics effects. All right, to demonstrate the next stack blocks here, I've just arranged our dinosaurs. So they're all on top of each other. Okay, it's a little bit crowded in there. There is a particular order that they are showing. So you can see the pterodactyl is the closest to us. And I think the T-Rex is all the way at the back. So we're currently on the pterodactyl. We can go to the front layer. So if I click that, our pterodactyl is now at the front. We can also go all the way to the back. So if we click this, watch what happens to our pterodactyl. Our pterodactyl is now sort of disappeared, but it hasn't really because it's all the way behind those other sprites. We can also increment the position in terms of the layer hierarchy by clicking this stat box. It go forward one layer. So now it has gone ahead of the T-Rex. Now it has gone ahead of the Triceratops. And now it has gone ahead of our Titanosaur here. You can also go backwards. So this is awesome when you want to create some visual effects with some layering. You might want something to always be at the front most layer. So you could put that in a forever block when the green flag is clicked. The last three blocks here are these reporter blocks. And I'll just click these flags and you'll see that we can report on the costume number, the backdrop number, and the size of the current sprite. So if we just drag them out and we click them, you'll see that the current costume number is one. Uh, we can also change the costume name to see what is the current costume name. We can go in and check the current backdrop number. We can also check the current backdrop name, and we can also check the current size of the sprite. You'll see here, if we adjust the costume name to number and we click the flag, that also pops up on the screen. So that's just something nice to know. It's time for a Scratchy question, and I wanna know which is your favorite graphic effect to use in Scratch? Drop your answer in the comment section below. Thanks for checking out this Scratch Looks Box tutorial. Like, subscribe, ring the bell if you're new around here and have a scout some of my other content on your screen right now. A couple of ways you can support Surf and Scratcher, go ahead and check out my Patreon page or suss out some of these tees and sweaters on Redbubble. Links below in the description. But until then, I'm off to go find a wave. Catch you in the next one.